Really, the only thing that can make this look bad is comparison, is comparing it. To is the X-T1 still worth it in 2020? Yes. Is the X-T1 still worth it in 2021? Yes. Is the X-T1 still worth it in 2022? Yes. Okay, so you get the idea. You will see that kind of video all the time on YouTube. And I watch these kind of videos all the time myself. And they're great because what they do is remind you that this old gear is still something worth considering. For the most part, photography gear doesn't degrade over time if you take good care of it. If it worked well today, it's going to work well years from now. And that's the idea behind these kinds of videos. Is so-and-so piece of kit still good in this certain year? And this video is specifically about the X-T1. And I'm making this video in 2020, but you could watch this video in 2021, 2022, and so on. And it's pretty much still gonna apply just as well then as it does now. Like I mentioned in other videos, I've owned a few Fujifilm cameras now. Over the past few years, I've bought and sold a few to test the waters of the Fuji system. Currently, my main Fuji camera is the X-H1, which I film all these videos on, so I'm rarely able to hold it and show it to you. I love my X-H1 and use it all the time, but I wanted a second stills shooter, something I could throw in my bag and carry with me every day. And I actually made a reveal video on finding this camera. In that video I revealed, I found a used X-T1 at a great price, and I really couldn't pass it up, so I decided to give it a shot. I've owned that X-T1 for a few weeks now. I've shot a lot of pictures on it already and love it. And this video is about that camera, the X-T1, and how it is still a great photographic tool in 2020. What's interesting is I've owned an X-T2 before and I absolutely loved that camera. The only reason I sold the X-T2 was so I could put that money towards the X-H1. To me, the X-H1's upgraded video capabilities were just enough for me to go all in on that one and make it my primary camera. And I knew after I got the X-H1 and got the accessories uh, and built my system around it, then I could revisit a second camera and revisit getting another Fujifilm. So let's get to the X-T1. I'm gonna go over some of the so-called cons or negative first, just to get that out of the way, because honestly, I think this is um, kind of a pointless list if you just get a camera like this and start using it, you're gonna pretty much forget about all the bad things about it when it's this useful and the quality is at this level. The negatives are really minimal. So I have my notes over here, so I'll be looking over off screen just for a minute as I'm reading. Some of the common complaints about the X-T1 is uh, there's no Acros film simulation, Acros, Acros, I don't know how to say it. Uh, no Acros film simulation, which um, was introduced in the next line of cameras. It's in the X-T2, X-T20, and so on. So it's not built in. Uh, none of these are in, particular, in specific order. The, the screen doesn't flip up vertically. Well, it doesn't flip up in this direction. If you have the camera like this, if you're doing a portrait angle shot as the X-T2 and the X-H1 on those cameras have that angle on the screen. The ISO dial lock is something a lot of people complain about and I kind of I kind of can sympathize with that. It is different than the X-T2. The X-T2 and X-H1 and whatnot, you turn the dial then press it to lock. This one you have to press the button in order to turn it. Uh, so it's something to get used to if you've used something else in the Fuji lineup. Um, the lack of the joystick is often something you'll hear. It's not a huge deal for me. I'm not a huge joystick user since only a few of the cameras I've ever owned have had one. I've been mostly in the prosumer range and the lower end Canons for the most part. So I always, I, I've always used the D-pad and whatnot or touchscreen anyway. So no joystick's not a big deal to me. This only has a single card slot. Uh, a lot of the newer cameras, X-T2 on up, 
have dual card slots. If you're a wedding photographer, that could be a serious negative. Um, and that's where you might look at the X-T2 and some of the other line of cameras in the lineup. Uh, there's no threaded shutter release button, which isn't a huge deal, but it's kind of a cool feature of the other cameras that have that. Um, so you can use old school threaded shutter release cables, and you can also modify the shutter button with threaded caps that you can find on Amazon and whatnot. There's a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of cool options for that out there for those cameras that have the threaded shutter release button. The maximum shutter speed is only one four thousandth of a second. With the X-T2, they raised it to one eight thousandth of a second and obviously kept that with the X-T3, X-T4, and the X-H1. The biggest compromise that I gave up on getting this as opposed to waiting for an X-T20 or another X-T2 was the video capabilities. This is lacking in the video department compared to those cameras, X-T2 on up. But to be honest, I haven't really played around with it that much. I didn't get it for video first. The first, the main purpose I wanted was a street shooter, a compact street photography camera um, that I could carry around constantly. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the negatives. Those are the big ones that I could think of, ones I see often, ones that I notice that, could, that, that, that popped into my head. Let's get to all the good stuff, and there's a lot of it. A lot of these positives, these good parts about the camera can be said for a lot of the cameras in the X-Series lineup. That's why I love them. But I still want to mention them specifically um, so you understand why a camera like this is such a great value. So right off the bat, let's talk about val value, um, what you're getting for the price, which is really the key um, part of making any sort of purchase decision, especially with photography gear. So I bought this for around $300. This, this obviously is the Graphite Silver Edition. And in context to the history of the X-T1, this was released after the black model. The black model was the original, and this was released later. I've always kind of wanted the one of these silver models of cameras, both my X-H1. Obviously, the X-H1 is black. There's only a black model of the X-H1. But my X-T2 was the black model. So I thought it'd be super cool to have a silver X-T1 or X-T2. And so when I saw this, that was another thing that really excited me about this one. The design, the, the design of these cameras is uh, a thing that I like, and I think that's a thing that a lot of people like, and it's probably part of the reason that you're drawn to these cameras is the design. And the silver aspect of this model is part of that, the chrome and the color to it. But like I said, this is $300. The online price now in the used market varies, and it's going up and down rapidly. Uh, Used Photo Pro had a couple within the $250 range before I made this video. Um, usually the Fujifilm cameras on Used Photo Pro are listed quickly and go quickly. Uh, there's a huge market right now for used Fuji gear, but that being said, this is still in that range consistently, 250 to 3 20 I'd say, 350 maybe. Price means nothing if you're not getting something good for your money. If, if the product sucks, if the gear sucks, it doesn't matter if you paid $5 for it. It's still not worth your time or investment for the most part. So it's got to deliver on that price. So I already started talking about the design and the design and build quality kind of go together in my mind. And that is a huge reason why I chose this over getting um, something else because uh, I was confident in the, the in the build quality for one since I've had good experience with Fujifilm cameras already and I like the design but let's talk about the build quality when I'm actually holding it um, so I don't know how much of the cameras metal but man a lot of it is and the dials feel so well made um, I don't know it's hard to explain if you've never used an X series camera before especially the X-T1, X-T2 and so on but every aspect of it feels really really well made and uh, from the way the, the the way the buttons feel when you push them there's no play at all uh, they feel really really good the wheels the front and back command dial wheels have a really solid and responsive feel to them um, I guess that's one small negative I didn't have on the list. I could mention it since it popped into my head just now. The, the rear command button, the rear command wheel doesn't click in like on the X-T2 and so on. Uh, I don't use that a ton, but if you do, that's something to keep in mind here. 
But anyways, the build quality is solid. This camera is made up of a lot of metal. I think it's aluminum. To be honest, I didn't look up what kind of metal they use and whatnot, I'm, I'm not sure. But having a modern digital mirrorless camera that has this kind of quality feel to it is cool. At $300, I think that's amazing, to be honest. Um, since there's so many DSLRs that still fall within that $300 range, and clearly not all of them are created equal. We'll get to image quality later, but build quality right off the bat is something you're gonna notice. Uh, the small size of the camera is a huge positive for me. Yeah, it's not as small as the X-T10, X-T20, and so on, or X-T3, but it's definitely smaller than my X-H1. And when I put the when I put a lens like the Pergear uh, 25 millimeter on there, I'll show you real quick. When I put a lens like this on there, it's super super compact. And if I have um, a decent sized jacket, I can usually fit the camera in there. Even technically, I can fit it in my pants pocket, although. It's not super discreet with that, but you get my point. Um, that's a pretty compact package right there, and it's probably one of the most compact pack, uh, camera setups that I've had. So that small size is a huge benefit for, benefit for me. Another great practical benefit, positive, is the viewfinder experience. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised about this. Now, I did a lot of research on comparing this to the other models in my price range, in my budget, and, and I couldn't find a lot of people that hated the other viewfinders necessarily, but I did find enough people mentioning that this was better than some of the other choices I had, which were like the X-T10, X-T20, even the X-T3. So I thought, well, the viewfinder, uh, the view, a good viewfinder experience is pretty important to me. I love using the viewfinder over the screen for the most part. I will use the screen on occasion, but a lot of times my eye is up to the viewfinder. So I like to have a clear viewfinder and a good performing viewfinder on a mirrorless camera. And this delivers a quality viewfinder experience. Um, really to the point where I was surprised. I figured it came out in 2014, still relatively early on in the history of the X-Series cameras. I figured I would have a noticeable difference between this viewfinder and the other X-Series X cameras I've tried. And really, there's not a huge noticeable difference. If it, I mean, if you sit there and compare, you're going to be able to pick it out. Um, so far, the viewfinder experience has not been a negative or an obstacle at all. It's been a really good positive, to the point where I do feel like it's going. It would be hard for me to go to anything less um, in the viewfinder in regards to the viewfinder. This is going to this and the XT2 and the XH1 have set a certain viewfinder experience standard, and that's going to be one of the important aspect to look at whenever I add another Fujifilm camera to my lineup. Um, I was seriously considering the X-E3 because brand new right now, they're like $500, so that's pretty amazing. And there's a few in the used market that are popping up. And I've never tried a camera with the rangefinder style. I know that it's not technically a rangefinder since it's uh, it doesn't have the optical viewfinder like the X-Pro2. But still, that style of camera is kind of cool, and I, I've never owned one. So I was seriously considering that camera. Uh, I landed on this one partly because I just found it, and it was a great buy, and I couldn't pass it up. But one of the benefits that I got out of this camera that that one didn't have that I'm grateful for is the tiltable screen on the back. So if you're out shooting street photography, I can have this down on my waist and be looking down and, and, and see when I'm shooting. And I've already used that a few times and it's really handy. I would have figured it out with the X-T3. The X-T3 wouldn't have stopped me from shooting what I wanted to shoot, but that's a benefit. That's something when you have it, then you could take advantage of it. So that tiltable screen is something that I really like. Okay, another benefit that goes along with design and build quality are the switches and dials. Uh, again, this is one of those features that's consistent with the X-T2, X-T3, and so on, and my X-H1. But it's one of the features I'm getting really used to and I like having. There's something to be said for having those things always readable, easily accessible. Um, yeah, they're not just for vanity, they're, they're really, really useful. I can look down and see what uh, 
metering setting I'm on, see if I'm in single shot or continuous, see what my ISO setting is, shutter speed, and whatnot. Um, I can still operate the shutter speed and whatnot without looking away from the viewfinder. Um, but when I do have the camera in my hand, again, I can look down and see what my settings are without even turning the camera on. I can see what they are set to, which is really, really cool. So switches and dials is something I always love about the X-Series system. And this one has an ISO dial, which is something that some of the other cameras don't have. So that's another benefit of this specifically that I really like. It also has a uh, exposure compensation dial as opposed to Max H1, which just has the button and then you adjust it uh, with the button and the command dial. To be honest, the exposure compensation dial is not something I use all the time. I haven't really done a ton of shooting in, in aperture priority mode. Um, I've done a lot of manual shooting. Most of the time it's, um, I'll meter the scene and pretty much stay within the settings for the scene and the situation I'm in. For the, in this situation to test out this camera to get a feel of, the, of how it operates, I, I did shoot some aperture priority and that dial is really nice. It, it works well. Okay, so the most important part of any camera, especially when talking about value, um, is image quality, at least to me. And if any camera that I'm looking at purchasing or a camera that I try out, if it doesn't deliver the image quality that I expect and hope for, at the very least, if it doesn't meet my expectations, then it then there's really no use. It doesn't matter how what the stats say about the megapixels or what the um, design is or whatnot. None, all that goes out the window if, if I'm working with my photos and I'm disappointed with the results. Without exaggerating, I can say the image quality has exceeded my expectations of what I would get out of this camera. Don't get discouraged or be fooled completely by megapixel count. That does mean something and you should pay attention to it, but it's not everything. I'm really, really happy with the image quality. And there's a lot that goes into image quality. I'm generalizing that term right now because we'll get into specifics later on in other videos uh, and whatnot. But in general terms, in terms of everything from dynamic range to sharpness to color, it just really delivers on what you expect from a Fujifilm X-Series camera at this point just really great. Part of that performance, that good performance, to me has to do with the ISO performance. I'm pretty modest with my ISO settings most of the time. I would love for a camera to shoot quality images at 6400. Um, that's very rare though that I go up that high. For me, for the most part, I want clean images at 3200 ISO in multiple situations, not just well-lit situations. I would love clean 3200 ISO images at night where there's a lot of blacks and whatnot. And this definitely has delivered on that so far. I think I mentioned before with my ISO settings, I, I like to mimic my film range. Uh, I don't usually push film past 3200. So mentally, I know that's just kind of the range I'm, I'm good with. And I'm really happy that, that this delivers in all those ranges really well. There are some other videos that have done really great examples of the great dynamic range of this camera. And I can say my experience has been consistent with this. The dynamic range of this camera has been really, really awesome. I can do a lot with these raw files in post. It's been really, really nice to have that flexibility with the, with the images because of the dynamic range. All of these positives um, combined with just an overall user experience with this camera make it possibly the best buy on the used market right now. 
Uh, I'm sure you can make some strong arguments for other cameras, but considering the X-T2 prices have kind of gone up a little bit, uh, they fluctuated a lot. But right now, with the prices where, where the X-T2 is at, I would say that this might be the best value for the dollar currently in photography. Um, it really kind of blows me away that what you can get for $300. If you're watching this video and you own this camera, you understand what I'm talking about. What keeps popping in my head is I'm just surprised that they had so much of this dialed in in terms of user experience and image quality on this model, considering it was the X-T1 and not you know, the, the, the later ones. If you're just getting into photography or if you have another camera and you've been curious about the Fuji system or looking for your first Fuji camera or first mirrorless camera, I cannot recommend this enough. I can't imagine someone being disappointed getting this camera at that price. The only caveat I would say, and this is a big one, if you are looking for a filmmaker's camera, if you're looking for a cheap cinema camera, there's probably other options that would fit that bill better. But if you wanna go out and shoot awesome street photography, portraits, even landscapes, if you want a really solid entry in the photography world, I can't recommend this enough. This is awesome. This gets you a really, really well-built um, camera for $300 that that gets you into the X-Series system so you can start trying some of these awesome Fuji lenses and even some affordable third-party lenses as well. So like I said in my reveal video of me buying this, really the only thing that can make this look bad is comparison, is comparing it to other things. When I'm out shooting, I'm not thinking about, oh, I'm com you know, I'm not holding this or that. This is this delivers in every aspect that I need it to when I'm out shooting my street photography. So is this still a good buy in 2020? Or still a viable option in 2021? Yes. And the answer will be yes for a very long time. For as long as you can find a working model, the answer will be yes. It's still a good buy. It's still a viable option. The only thing that will change for this camera in 2021 or in 2022 or in 2023 is that there will be more cameras to compare it to. The only thing I kind of regret is not giving this more of a chance earlier on. I just kind of overlooked it. Um, but I'm happy I found it. I'm happy it fell into my lap. And I can't wait to keep shooting with it and to do more follow-up videos to tell you things I've learned about it or to show you some of the images I've created. So again, check out the X-T1. Don't sleep on it. It's uh, an amazing camera for the money. <music>Thank you again for watching. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. So if you found this channel based on this video or my other Fujifilm videos, welcome. This is just the beginning for me in regards to these Fujifilm videos. So please stick around. And again, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you soon.